Did you know that there are lots of fake buildings in London hiding something else underneath? Well, join me in this video as we show you some great examples of London's fake buildings. We're going to start here at Leinster Gardens. It's the most obvious one, but it deserves to be in this video. So this is 23 to 24 Leinster Gardens in Bayswater, a typical house in an exclusive area of West London. But if you look closely, you can see that the windows are painted on. And if you were to knock on the door, well, nobody would answer, as it's a fake facade. The real reason is it's hiding a ventilation shaft. Just a few metres underneath are the district and circle lines of the London Underground. You can see how they blend in perfectly with the architecture in the area, even sharing balconies and decorations with its neighbours. We're now on Porchester Terrace, behind the properties, and as you can see, we have a working underground line just below the surface. This is what they call a cut and cover line. You can also see the five foot thick concrete supported wall that holds the building facade on the other side. So why did they need to do this? Well, back in the 1860s, when the Metropolitan Railway was being extended between Paddington and Bayswater, they would have needed vents every few hundred yards to extract the steam built up in the tunnels from the old steam hauled trains that shuttled up and down what is now the London Underground. Some of these vents were cleverly situated in already open areas, and some hidden in statues and monuments, as we will see later in this video. But some were more difficult, and as the line passes through this very built up and affluent area, they needed somewhere to place a vent. So they demolished two houses in 1868. Nobody wanted to look at a hole in the ground, so they built two front facades of houses matching the style of the area and had their giant hole hidden behind them. They've also been a subject for pranksters over the years, leaving takeaway delivery drivers confused when delivering food. And in the 1930s, a hoaxer made a small fortune when he sold tickets for a charity ball at the properties, with guests queuing up outside in their ball gowns and tuxedos, only to be knocking on a fake door. On to our next building, this one isn't exactly fake, but it isn't a full house in the sense of dimensions. The Skinny House, as it's known, is located in South Kensington, just around the corner from the Natural History Museum. This was another victim of the Metropolitan Railway construction, with many houses and gardens in the area facing demolition. After an uproar by the landowner, they managed to reduce the amount of houses to be demolished. However, the original properties on this site namely 1 to 5 Thurlow Square, were knocked down. Some years later, a local builder saw an opportunity to utilise this triangular piece of land, and with the area being very affluent with artists, he decided to build seven artist studios. The building is now flats and only six foot wide at its narrowest point, growing to 34 foot at its widest, and these days would set you back over £1 million for just a one bed apartment in the block. The Wellington Arch, located in the middle of Hyde Park Corner Roundabout, built in 1825 as an intended outer entrance to Buckingham Palace. It was repositioned from the actual Hyde Park Corner in the 1880s due to a new road scheme. But what has this got to do with anything, I hear you cry? Well, this is not just a monument to the Duke of Wellington. It's also technically not a building, but it did house a police station in there. So, let's not get technical. It actually houses a vent inside the southern pier of the arch. For, you guessed it, no, not the underground, but a road underpass built in the 1960s that runs underneath where the roundabout now stands. The part of the monument that used to house a police station was gutted and a vent built inside and up to the roof to vent out the car fumes from the Piccadilly road tunnel via a shaft. There are no obvious signs of the vent other than the metal grill at the top of the building and an open vent on the roof. This lovely column in Paternoster Square, just around the corner from St Paul's Cathedral. And again, not a building. Shh. It was designed by Sir William Whitefield and opened in 1996, made of Portland stone and topped by gold leaf. But other than being a memorial for the fires of London, its main duty is to serve as a ventilation shaft for a service road that runs beneath the square. If you look closely, under the feet of people enjoying their lunches, you can see the grills around the whole monument. 
venting out toxic fumes to make their avocado sandwiches actually taste like something. Also, this sculpture, definitely not a building, just around the corner from it, is also a vent for an underground substation. This building, yes, it is a building, with actual people inside, located on the corner of the Strand and Craven Street, is now an office block, but attached to the building and located just behind are these four shafts emanating from the rooftop, cleverly disguised as part of the building and resembling a somewhat small version of Battersea Power Station. These are in fact four ventilation shafts for the nearby Charing Cross Station. In fact, they were built to extract the heat from the underground platforms and upon passing would be barely noticed at all. This is the James Henry Great Head statue located on a traffic island in the middle of Cornhill, opposite the Royal Exchange. Built in 1994, it features two plaques on either side, one dedicated to Greathead, who was chief engineer and inventor of the travelling shield, used on the cutting of tunnels for London's deep level tube system. And on the other side is a carved stone badge for the City and South London Railway Company. But its main function, again, a vent, as can be seen at the top of the monument, just below the statue plinth, this time for Bank Station, situated directly beneath our feet and this whole area. This was a later additional vent, added to meet modern safety standards after the King's Cross fire in 1987. A very inventive but expensive way of hiding a shaft, as with all these buildings in London. I can't help but think, if it was up north, they would just have enough money given to paint a pipe sticking out the ground. Our final mention is this unobtrusive little building, sandwiched perfectly between the historic Tower of London and Starbucks. This is a 1920s replacement for a much grander building that stood close by, and it was used as an entrance to the first ever tube railway, constructed in 1870. It was the Tower Subway, a 410 metre underground narrow gauge railway that crossed the River Thames. It only lasted for one year, before being turned into a pedestrian tunnel. But this was also short-lived, as the opening of the nearby Tower Bridge in 1894 caused a massive drop in income for the dark and dingy tunnel. Its later use was for the London Hydraulic Power Company, and today it's used to carry water mains and communication cables across the river. This is also linked with our previous entry, as James Greathead used his famous wrought iron tunneling shield to bore through the clay of the River Thames. If I've missed any fake buildings in London, or if you know any elsewhere in the UK, let me know in the comments below. Check out more of my videos here, and I'll see you in the next adventure.